happy little games. Game developers nowadays must have a terrible time coming up with something exciting and new that hasn't been done time and time again. At the start of the golden age of arcades, it was essentially the wild, wild west. Anything and everything was fair game for the most part, which allowed designers to produce whatever they could dream up all within the hardware limitations. Pac-Man introduced the maze game. Donkey Kong gave us the platformer, and Dig Dug brought us the digging in the dirt concept. Today, we are going to take a look at the grand pappy of all digging games which goes by the name of Dig Dug. This classic game from the Wizards at Namco saw you dig and dig and dig some more while dispatching all the enemies in the process. What was Dig Dug's real name? What is the inspiration behind his main weapon? Let's find out as we dig into the history of Dig Dug. The year is 1981 and Namco designer Masahisa Ikagami is planning out his next arcade title. Namco had a lot of success with two maze games with the first one being Pac-Man and the second one to a lesser extent Rally X. In both of these games, the player is the prey in which you have to avoid the enemies while collecting items in a maze. Mr. Ikigami did not want to repeat the same game mechanic for a third time, so he decided to reverse the formula. In the new game, the player would take the predatory role and eliminate all the enemies to complete the stage. Mr. Ikigami did not want to use a standard laser blaster, which was quite the rage at the time, but inspiration struck from someplace completely unexpected. While riding his bike to work, he noticed his tire was low. He stopped to add air and thinking to himself, I must be careful not to overinflate, otherwise it will pop. When designing this new game, he remembered this incident with his tire and felt it would be the perfect way to dispatch the enemies and also set itself apart from all the other arcade games on the market. It was still a maze game of sorts, but this time you would be digging underground. The game ran on a modified version of the Galaga arcade system board and was actually helped along by Galaga's designer, Shigeru Yokoyama. The characters would be a wild and wacky bunch that would include fire-breathing dragons and goofballs wearing goggles. The main character in Dig Dug, who at the time was still known as Dig Dug, was based off of the Smurfs. When the promotional artwork for the game was designed, the look was modified to resemble a human in a costume and less like a Smurf. Speaking of digging, Mr. Ikigami liked the idea of the game taking place underground and you having to dig your way down towards the enemies to take them out, essentially creating your own maze. Sound designer Yuriko Kino was tasked with creating a realistic walking effect for the main character, however, she was having trouble getting it to sound right. To get around this, she decided to create a catchy little jingle instead, which still rattles around in the caverns of my mind to this day. The team had hoped to allow for player-created mazes, which would have definitely changed the gaming mechanics but this was dropped early on in development. When the game was being tested at a local arcade in Japan, the developers noticed that there were two types of players. One type enjoyed the frantic pumping and killing of the enemies, while the other type enjoyed just dropping rocks on them. Similar to Pac-Man, it was also heavily merchandised, including t-shirts and an extremely wacky commercial in which the director must have been enjoying quite a bit of nose candy. It's a bit long, but it's well worth the watch. 
I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending the third international conference on science and technology. This afternoon, what our agenda... What the heck is that? Well, I don't know, but that's another one. Good gracious, there goes another one. They're multiplying. This program to bring you a special bulletin. Mysterious underground creatures are moving your way. We have a problem here. Come on, everybody. Take a chance. We're going underground to do the dig dug dance. First to tunnel through a wall out of dirt. Power a wonder rat without being hurt. Quick now, turn around. What do you do? No, 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 Yeah, I'm looking at you. Stay down deep in the ground when a flower sprouts up. You're playing on the ground, but you got a Say something. Hello. Just like a bazooka. Use the two. They're called bazookas. Fight our and pick the. What are they doing? What happened? Eat all the bad cheese and bread. All they want is for us to play with them so we can all have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Eat the greatest fight of them all. Dig Dug burrowed its way into the arcades in 1982. It was brought to us by the fine minds at Namco, but distributed by other companies in different countries such as Atari here in the States. Initially, there wasn't any storyline when it came to this game. This was par for the course for a lot of early titles, but the storyline later on revolved around Dig Dug protecting all the various gardens. There are 256 levels in total, but the game loops after 15. The game was marketed as a strategic digging game and allowed for one or two players. You take control of Dig Dug, who in later games had his name retconned to Taizo Hori, which roughly translates to I Want to Dig. As you set out to clear the stages of the various enemies by digging in the dirt. Your trusty, but perhaps rusty, weapon of choice is your air pump, which you will need to inflate and inflate and inflate some more to get those dastardly creatures until they pop like a female model going in for a boob job. There are a couple of different ways to use your air pump. You can press and hold the button, which will slowly inflate the enemies. A quicker way is to tap the button and push towards them with the joystick causing them to inflate at a rapid pace. Once they are partially inflated you are invulnerable to them. However, they will slowly deflate. There are only two different enemy types in the game. There is the Puka who is a round red creature with goggles that reminds me of the comic book character Plastic Man. The name comes from Puka Puka, a Japanese word for puffing. And the other villainous character you have to deal with is the Figar, who is a green fire-breathing dragon. You have to be careful with these creatures because the range of their fire is pretty long. These are not just ordinary creatures though, as they have the ability to move through the dirt just like ghosts. Because of the danger involved with inflating these fire-breathing hussies, you will get double points if you take them from behind or directly head-on. Something else to help you in your quest to regain control of your garden are the rocks. 
You can tunnel underneath the rock and loosen it, and once your character moves out of the way, gravity causes it to fall to the ground, taking out any enemies in its path. You have to be careful not to get in its way, because once it starts to fall, you can be squished as well. The more enemies you kill with the rocks, the higher the point value will be. You can kill up to 8 enemies at once with a maximum point value of 15,000. If you drop 2 rocks in the same stage, a hidden vegetable will appear in the center, but you have to be quick because it will disappear after a few seconds. These change from stage to stage. There are 8 different vegetables that can appear such as carrots, onions, mushrooms, and the galaxian. The multicolored madness of each garden isn't just there for its good looks either. There are four different colors of dirt with the most points awarded for killing an enemy the lower on the screen that you appear. If it's points you are after, the more you dig, the more you score. When you get down to the last enemy, they may revert to ghost form and try to exit the level as quickly as possible by floating to the top. The intensity of the music also changes as you attempt to stop him from fleeing. After you defeat all the enemies, you advance to the next stage. The level indicator is located in the lower right hand corner, but there are also flowers at the top of the screen which also tells you what level you are on. To aid you in your quest, extra lives are awarded starting at 20,000 points. Depending on the dip switch settings, it could go up to 50,000. Similar to other arcade titles of the day, there is no official ending for this game. After level 255, a kill screen appears. A Puka will be placed directly on top of Dig Dug, which kills you instantly. The Atari revisions of the game corrects this problem. When the game was released in the arcades, it was another huge success for Namco, not only in Japan and the United States, but all over the world. It spawned the entire digging game genre, and with it, brought the likes of Mr. Do, which in itself is a fantastic game. The game was so successful that it was one of the most bootlegged games since Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, especially with arcade titles like Zigzag. For a time, Dig Dug was married to Kissy from the game Baraduke. Apparently the marriage did not work out due to Kissy hopping from bed to bed with the frequency of a cheap ham radio. 1985 brought about the Japanese arcade release of Dig Dug 2. Now even though the first game revolved around digging underground, this game takes place entirely on top of the soil switching to an overhead view. The game takes place on an island in which once again the goal is to kill all of the Pukas and the Figars. Your trusty air pump is back as your primary weapon but you also have a jackhammer which can be used to create faults in the ground. You can drill in one of four directions causing various cracks. If you completely shut off a part of the island it will crumble and fall into the ocean taking any enemies and possibly you with it. A lot of the same gameplay mechanics have been brought over from the first game, including the enemies being able to turn into ghosts. It is pretty cool dropping a giant piece of the island into the ocean with six or seven enemies along with it. Most people would recognize this title from the Famicom and NES versions, which to be fair were pretty good conversions. In 1996, Namco released Namco Classic Collection which features updated and arranged versions of the classic titles. 
Volume 2 introduced us to Dig Dug Arrangement, which keeps the spirit of the original alive by introducing fresh gameplay elements and a new coat of paint. The game includes two players simultaneously, which was always one of my favorites to do back in the day. The game includes new versions of Puka and Figar, as well as some new kind of horned enemy, an alien, dragon, and exploding robot. There are giant rocks and cosmo balls which will destroy all enemies in its path. You have to watch out for the pipes because you can't drill through them. Other power-ups include increasing Dig Dug speed, the length of his pump which is something my wife wished I could use, force fields, and more. The music has been upgraded as well but we still get the classic jingle as well as the sound effects. The game is a whole lot of fun to play and well worth checking out if you get the chance. Intended as the third main entry into the Dig Dug series, 1999 saw the release of Mr. Driller. The title is more puzzle oriented which is a stark contrast from the original game. When the game was still in the prototype stage it was known as Dig Dug 3. You take control of Susumu Hori who is the middle son of Dig Dug as you drill to the bottom of the screen destroying all the colored blocks. The blocks will clear if four or more are touching each other causing chain reactions. The game was so successful it started a franchise that has seen over 10 games released across all platforms. In 2001, Dig Dug Deeper was released for Windows. This game marks Dig Dug's first outing into the third dimension, and to be honest it should have stayed as flat as a pancake. The graphics have obviously been upgraded but they still don't look very good. The actual gameplay itself feels off with digging in particular feeling rather clunky. The music sounds pretty good with a nice homage to the original arcade tunes. The game itself is pretty easy and pretty short. The one key element that is missing from this version is the fun factor which this version does not have. I've had more fun plucking my wife's unibrow. Two thousand five brought us the release of Dig Dug Digging Strike for the Nintendo DS. The game mixes elements of the original Dig Dug and Dig Dug Two to create a whole new gameplay experience. The game takes place across fifteen stages, with each one having a large boss character that you have to sink to the bottom of the ocean. The game makes excellent use of the dual screen playfield as you can see where the boss is at on the top screen and on top of the ground. The bottom screen sees you dig in the dirt underneath. The Figars and the Pukas make their triumphant return along with new enemies such as penguins. You still have the ability to over inflate your enemies or they can be taken out by falling rocks quicksand or other environmental hazards. The game is fun to play and it keeps everything fresh by mixing the elements from the first two games together. Thanks to the retro boom over the last decade or so, 
Dig Dug has seen a resurgence just like many other classic arcade games from the past. There are collectibles, socks, shoes, Funko Pops, handheld games, tabletop games, and its own arcade one-up version. Now renamed to Taizo Hori, the character would show up in a number of other video games such as Namco's Super Wars for the Wonderswan Color and also in Namco X Capcom for the PlayStation 2. Puka has appeared in a number of different Namco games including Sky Kid, Ridge Racer Type 4, and Pac-Man World among others. Taizo, Figar, and Puka would also appear briefly in the film Wreck-It Ralph. A game this successful was 100% guaranteed to be converted to a number of home systems. After these messages, we'll be right back. It isn't termites. It isn't mice. It's Atari's Dig Dug, the earth-shattering arcade game. Dig Dug digs his own mazes. He digs for balloon men. He digs for dragons. And now he's digging his way into homes everywhere. Dig Dug is under this world. Let's start out by checking out the Atari 2600 version. At first glance, the game doesn't appear to be anything special, but after playing it just for a few minutes, it feels like Dig Dug, although on a smaller scale. The programmers were only given four months to complete the project, and I'd say they did a commendable job. They were able to reduce the amount of flicker on screen, although the Figars do look like frogs instead of dragons. For some reason, the walking tune has also been changed as well. The Apple II version was fugly back in the day, but I must admit it has grown on me quite a bit. Still nothing to get your nipples in a twist about, but for a decent game of Dig Dug, it's not too bad. At least as far as the graphics and playability go. As far as the sound effects and music, it's pure, unadulterated, queef nasty, and it won't be the last time in this video we get to experience those sweet, sweet blasts. <laughs> Commodore VIC-20 version is surprisingly well done. The graphics are nice and colorful, and although the sprites are chunky like a monkey, they are well animated. The sound effects and music are pretty good, and the game moves along at a nice, brisk pace. The controls could have been better, but overall, this was a pretty good version to play back in the day. Sticking with the computer versions for just a little bit longer, let's go ahead and take a look at the Texas Instruments version. We don't see a whole lot of conversions for the system, but there have been some pretty good games released and Dig Dug falls right in the middle. The graphics are colorful with some decent sounding tunes and sound effects. The enemy sprites are only single color and the pukas are gray for some reason. The Atari 5200 version doesn't look like much on the surface, but it does play a pretty good game of Dig Dug despite the horrible joysticks. 
The actual character sprites look like you're playing Dig Dug Jr. as everything has been shrunk down with not a lot of detail. Once again, the character sprites are single color which really makes them stand out. DOS version was released almost 40 years ago and it sure does show its age. For starters, you only have CGA graphics which means Pastelomania is running wild. To be honest, I could get past the eye bleeding visuals if the game was decent enough to play. As soon as it starts up though, you will see how extremely slow the game is. From the time Dig Dug first appears at the top, you'll have time to go and make yourself a hero sandwich and with a couple of seconds left over to take a bite or two before the game starts up. The enemy sprites aren't too bad with a fair amount of detail, but Dig Dug looks like he's getting ready to go on a mission to Mars. As far as the sound goes, what we have here is probably the worst PC speaker screeching and scratching I have ever heard. It definitely gets the gold medal in the Queef Olympics. The Atari 7800 port was one of the original launch titles for the system. The graphics are large and detailed with plenty of color all throughout. They closely resemble the arcade original although obviously running at a much lower resolution. The controls are nice and tight but the speed of the game is just a little bit off. What really lets the game down is the sound. It's a decent attempt and it's just too bad that more couldn't have been done with the audio hardware provided. The game was also released for the original Game Boy, but some concessions had to be made. For starters, the screen now scrolls and obviously it's not in color. However, the sprites are large and detailed and they never get lost in the background. The sound effects and music are adequate, but overall it's not bad. This game also comes with a new mode called New Dig Dug, which is an arranged version of the game that offers power-ups and new levels. version is exceptionally well done although the screen does scroll which does detract slightly from the overall experience. The sprites are large and colorful and the audio is well done sounding very close to the arcade original. It controls great and this was one of the best versions to take on the road to play back in the day. <laughs> The Atari 800 version looks dull and dreary. The Figar looks like a snapping turtle and Puka is a depressing light purple. Once again, Dig Dug has got his orders for the next moon exploration. Also, his hose is now green which is something I experienced back when I had gonorrhea. Surprisingly, it does control fairly well and the gameplay is nice and fast. The 
NES version was probably the best home console conversion at the time. The sprites are very close to being arcade perfect although the game now takes place at night since the backgrounds are all black. The music and sound effects are very good along with the speed being spot on. One of my favorite versions of play back in the day. The good old Commodore 64 version does a pretty good job at replicating the arcade experience. While everything has a bit of a squished look to it when compared to other versions, everything is well animated but the speed of the game is slightly off. The music and sound effects could have been better but it does control really well. An enhanced homebrew version was recently released that fixed a few bugs with the speed and also introduced an expert mode in the process. Television version is a big step up from the 2600 part as far as the visuals go. Once again, we are treated to single color enemy sprites, but everything else looks good with a fair amount of detail. Sound effects and music are not too bad, but one thing I couldn't stand about this version or any game on the Intellivision were the horrible controllers. Playing this on an emulator with an Xbox 360 pad made it so much more enjoyable. It was released for a few different Japanese computers including the Casio PV-1000. While the animation is not very smooth, the character sprites are large and very detailed. The sound effects are decent enough and it does control good despite the animation issues. also released for the NEC PC-88 which for an early computer conversion looks really good. The animation is choppy but the sprites are large and detailed and have plenty of color. The audio is fantastic but the speed of the game isn't quite up to par. The MSX version is not much visually, but underneath that ugly interior is a pretty good version of Dig Dug. The sprites are all single color, including Dig Dug this time around, and you now have pink boulders at your disposal. Audio wise, it does a good job at replicating the arcade jingles, but it does run a bit on the slow side. Best Japanese home computer release and quite honestly the best home release back in the day was for the X68000. This was released late in the system's life and included a two pack of Dig Dug 1 and 2. Due to the hardware involved these are essentially arcade perfect. The graphics, sounds and controls are all fantastic. The 
the game was also released over the years in various Namco compilations including Namco Museum Volume 3, Namco Museum 64, Namco Museum 50th Anniversary Edition, and more. It's also been released on Xbox Live and the Wii Virtual Console. It was also a part of the Namco Arcade Classics Plug and Play TV Games console which includes Pac-Man, Galaxian, Rally X, and Bosconian. As you can tell from this extensive video, Dig Dug is one of my all-time favorite arcade games. The graphics, sounds, and the controls made me pump quarter after quarter into the machine at my local bowling alley. It's a fun little game that still holds up to this day. If you've never had a chance to dig in the dirt while using your air pump to destroy enemies, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you could always use the donate button up above. Thanks everybody for watching.